Welcome back. The International Criminal Court judges have ordered the continued detention of former Ivory Coast President Lauren Gbagbo during his war crimes trial. The judges say Mr Gbagbo presented a flight risk and has a network of supporters that could obstruct or endanger trial proceedings if released. Gbagbo's defense team had requested his provisional release, but the judges declined as they failed to propose a concrete and solid condition that would ensure his continued presence at trial. Former President Lauren Gbagbo, whose trial began in January 2016, is accused of four counts for crimes against humanity, including murder, rape, prosecution and other acts allegedly committed during post-electoral violence in Ivory Coast. Well, let's take you now to the northeast of Nigeria, where health workers continue to strive to contain a cholera outbreak which has swept through displacement camps with a drive to vaccinating thousands of people against the disease. According to the United Nations, an estimated 54 people have died since the outbreak in the region, but aid workers say people do not report cases or seek treatment early, leaving problems in containing the disease. Health workers in northeast Nigeria have scaled up efforts to contain a cholera outbreak which is sweeping through camps for the displaced, thousands of whom were uprooted from their homes by militant group Boko Haram. According to the United Nations, there are currently 4,000 suspected cases of cholera, including 54 deaths. Cholera is an acute diarrhea infection spread by contaminated food and water. It can easily be treated with oral rehydration solution if caught early, but can kill within hours if left untreated. A major vaccination campaign by UNICEF is currently underway and aims to reach more than 900,000 people in and around Maiduguri this week. There are a lot of challenges uh, around a cholera outbreak. Uh, because it's a, it's a waterborne disease, so that is spreading around very quickly when it's rainy season, and it's um, and it's getting and it's worsened by the fact that the poor sanitary condition in the camps where the uh, IDPs are living today in Majigori town and around the area. So there are a lot of factors which are not helping. Uh, the situation. So today is a, there's a lot of challenges. Uh, it, it requires a lot of uh, resources and a lot of coordination within the different actors in the area. The United Nations says in this month, about 1.8 million people have fled their homes due to Boko Haram violence or food shortages, and nearly three quarters are now in cholera hotspots. While the outbreak started in Maiduguri, the capital of Borno. The number of cholera cases is increasing rapidly in the nearby towns of Monguno and Dikwa. But efforts to contain the outbreak are also being hindered as people fail to report suspected cases to the authorities. Health workers say the life-saving vaccines will play a vital role in slowing down the spread of the disease. We are trying to contain it. So the objective is to get as many people vaccinated as possible as soon as possible. So. We are targeting 900,000 people <clears throat> in the camps and in the surrounding communities. Uh, we'll give a first dose and later on, uh, when we have doses, when access permits, we'll give a second dose. The latest figures represent a 1.8% fatality rate, above the 1% rate that the World Health Organization rates as an emergency. The short incubation period of two hours to five days means the disease can spread with explosive speed. At the Muna displaced camp in Maiduguri, which was hit by cholera, many displaced people say they are taking precautions to avoid contamination. Boko Haram's eight-year campaign to create an Islamic state has killed at least 20,000 people, uprooted 2.7 million, and sparked one of the largest humanitarian crises in the world. Julius Kabula is an orthopedic technician in Uganda and he has come up with a plan that provides people living with disability in his country with cheaper versions of prosthetic limbs. By using recycled plastics and other materials, he makes the artificial limbs that improves mobility for his clients. Alan Serugo has an appointment today at a workshop in Kampala that specializes in making prosthetic limbs. Serugo lost his leg in an accident a few years ago. He is here today to see Julius Gabula, a trained orthopedic technician. Gabula wants to see more Ugandan amputees using prosthetics to enable them lead a quality life. 
He decided to rent space at a garage in the city where he uses recycled plastics and other materials to make affordable versions of prosthetics. While working on them, it is not a must that you have to fit them, that they should go back to the way they were living before. Hmm? But we restore them, we rehabilitate them to the extent that they are able to move in a similar way they were moving. However, we cannot, it is not possible to go back to what God made at first. The workshop produces mobility devices used for both hands and legs. The products cost between 200 to 1,300 US dollars. Similar ones made by established manufacturers go for about double the price in orthopedic outlets in the city. Story building, marketplaces, because you know as an, an amputee you have to move in um, a flat surface area where you don't have to get problems from. And uh, uh, public facilities like toilets, you can't access them because when you find that it's not a, a sitting toilet, you can't use it. There are lots of challenges which are out there, public transport, where if you as an amputee, if they, someone finds you like public means, uh, like uh, taxis, if they find you with clutches, they'll bypass you because they know that you're going to take a lot of time to enter the taxi. Gabula says he allows his customers to pay for the prosthetics in installments, even though sometimes he's unable to meet the demand for the artificial limbs. The challenge is a face. The one is that materials are very expensive to get. Even when you get them on, on local market, you get a little, and others you, you need help. For example, you need a donor to be sponsoring you hmm, to get the materials from outside such that you can work on a patient. According to the Ugandan Ministry of Health, about two million citizens are living with disability. Many have no access to wheelchairs or crutches, thereby making movement difficult. But physically disabled people also have no access to education, health care and employment and live in poverty as a result. About 150 people are using the prosthetics so far. Gabula plans to open another workshop in western Uganda on the border with Congo to cater for the victims of the war in the neighboring country and enable those affected become more productive in the society. Ten ancient artifacts, including a part of the Phoenix Beard, were moved to the New Grand Egyptian Museum in Cairo, which is set to be the world's largest archaeological museum when it opens in 2018. Egypt's Antiquities Ministry has been transporting artifacts from the Egyptian Museum in Tahrir Square to the vast halls of the new facility. Also being moved is a standing statue belonging to King Khafre, who built the second biggest pyramid at Giza, and also the founder of the fifth dynasty and ruled, uh, who ruled around 4,300 years ago. The move comes as the ministry prepares for its soft opening early next year, where some of the world's oldest relics will be displayed. Egypt is hoping the new museum will be a draw for tourism. And that's News uh, Network Africa at this time. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker.